As Ellie mentioned, my research is in the field of AI-driven personalization uh, with the goal, so it's a research that is a multidisciplinary, it's at the intersection of AI, human-computer interaction, cognitive science, will, with the goal of creating um, intelligent interactive systems that can provide their users with more personalized experience by being able to capture user needs and abilities during the interaction and adapt the interaction accordingly very importantly, by making sure to abide to good principles of human-computer interaction, including transparency, user control, and user trust. And uh, in order to do that, it's important that the system is able to build a model of the user, user model, where a variety of um, user traits or states can be captured, including goals, uh, domain expertise, preferences, and even more esoteric things such as emotions, metacognitive abilities, cognitive load. And in order to do that, the system, the AI, needs to rely on whatever information comes from the interaction, which could be basic interaction events, but these days we also have information coming from more sophisticated input sources, such as, for instance, signal from physiological sensors that can tell us about the user affect, information from how the user look at the interface. And once this information, once the system makes these abstractions about the user, then uh, the, the moment comes to decide what to do with that information and how to personalize the interaction for instance, by understanding how to provide personalized help on whatever task the user is engaging in, how to provide tailored information that is presented, how to provide recommendations. Um, there has been a lot of research in this field. It's been going on for quite a few decades, although it's becoming now very, very popular because of all the advances in AI that we know about. Uh, some of the most obvious applications are recommender systems, but it's been great research going on also in the field of smart homes, um, personalized health, assistive technologies, entertainment, and there is also being a lot of research in the field of intelligent uh, educational environments, also known as education, uh, intelligent tutoring systems or AI in education, where the focus is essentially to apply that concept of personalization to learners so that the systems, the, is these intelligent educational environments can provide personalized instruction. Um, and there has been very interesting work. Some of the success stories relate, for instance, to um, intelligent tutors that can help students practice and acquire problem-solving skills in a variety of domains. But uh, there's also been very interesting research that goes beyond problem-solving skills, moving, for instance, into systems that aim to improve a learner metacognitive abilities, for instance, uh, self-regulated learning, ability of self-monitoring. Um, other research has been devoted to creating environments that try to provide more motivational environments for learning, including educational games or interactive simulations. And I also, last that I want to mention, this idea of having effective tutors, that is, um, intelligent systems that can capture a student affective states in addition to their cognitive abilities and respond accordingly to make learning more engaging and uh, motivational. Uh, but today, so I've done work in several of these uh, subfields, and I'll be happy to talk to you maybe after my talk. But today, what I want to focus about is this concept that whatever is the field in which the system should provide personalization, the main point is that we want that to happen in a way that, again, is transparent and maintains user control and trust. And this brings to this point of trust in AI, which is a topic of great concern these days. There is a lot of initiatives that are being um, uh, created about you know, how to create AI systems that enable their users to understand when what the AI proposes and suggests is valuable and should be followed, and when um, maybe there are limitations and the users should, should disregard the AI advice, like in the example of Hall it, from the movie that we saw at the very beginning. Um, and uh, in the field of intelligent interact uh, educational environments, 
there has been, so one, one point is that there is a lot of thinking about how to, uh, you know, trust an AI and what is the relationship. Uh, there are not many answers. Um, and in the field of intelligent educational environments, there has been some work in how to foster transparency, user control and trust, which so far has focused on um, making the system show to the learner what the system thinks about the learner. So, you know, to actually visualize the learner model. For instance, a couple of examples here. Uh, to, uh, on your left, there is a system that it's the algebra tutor, is an intelligent tutor that helps students acquire um, algebra-related skills. And at any given point, the, the student can ask the system, you know, how am I doing on a variety of algebra-related skills? And the system shows that uh, bar graph with what is called the skillometer. On the right is a similar idea applied to a system that helps uh, people acquire how to, you know, skills to provide good job interviews. So the system monitors a variety of behaviors related to how you actually move during an interview, how you speak. And again, at any given point, the system shows to the learner what is the current assessment along all these skills. This is very good, and there's some initial um, studies showing that just showing to the learner what the system, you know, what is the current system assessments of the skills can be useful, makes the learner learn better, but there is still not a very clear understanding of how having this level of transparency relates to learner, to trust and user acceptance of the system. Um, another approach to showing just what the system thinks, it's also, it's understand, um, enable the system to actually explicitly explain, not just show what the system thinks, but how the system got to that point, okay? This goes back to David's talk, which is great, that was just before me because he really gave a great introduction to the, this concept of explanation as a tool. Um, so how does it help if the system can explain its underlying reasoning? Um, and this is uh, a field that is explainable AI, so a lot of research goes into can AI and machine learning and this, some of them, some of these techniques are more black boxes than others, but can they be explained to the user? Is it possible for the system to explain why, how, what if, provide alternative scenarios? Uh, there is a lot of research, but my interest is when, so Explanation, as David said, is a tool. When it's actually important to provide explanations, which users want explanations and can use them in a way that increase their trust in the technology that they're using. Um, and along these lines, uh, in our group, so we have tried, so we developed an intelligent um, educational environment that it's an interactive simulation which is designed to help learners understand how a specific algorithm to solve constraint satisfaction problems work. Essentially, it's just a, it's a tool where examples are available and the learner can just load these examples and use a variety of functionalities to understand the underlying workings of this algorithm for constraint satisfaction. Uh, the problem is interactive simulations are very open-ended. Some learners are very good at using them. Others might get lost, get stuck on using one functionality instead of all the ones available. So we added to the system um, a bit of AI that tracks how a learner is using the simulation. The system has an understanding of what are good behaviors that are conducive to learning when using this tool and what are behaviors that are not conducive to learning and the system can provide personalized hints that try to steer learning, uh, learners in using the system at best. And we have some studies showing that having this personalized help on how to use this educational interactive simulation improves learners' um, benefit from using the system than when these hints are not available. But what we are trying to understand now is could these hints be even more useful for the learners if the system could explain why and how they were generated, okay? Well, easy, easier to say than done. This is the underlying AI. I don't expect you to understand this graph. It's what the system does to generate its personalized hints. It's a mix of data mining, machine learning, and some other AI techniques. Very complex. 
Um, but what we did, so we started thinking about how we can generate explanations for the users of how these hints are generated. Um, and we looked at what's in the literature about how these explanations should be built. There isn't much. Um, but we picked uh, three principles that were presented in this paper at CHI 2018, where the idea is that explanations should be incremental. There should be lev different levels of details available to the user to explore at will. Uh, they should be sound, that is, they should provide a faithful description of how the underlying AI works, and also should not be overwhelming, which there is a bit of a tension between being faithful and sound when the underlying complexity is high and not being overwhelming. So we grappled a lot with how to generate explanations for this particular educational environment. And um, we came up, I don't, again, I don't expect you to read the content. I just want you to grab the concept that we created these five different levels of uh, explanations that the learner can access and can navigate as they like. Um, Three of them relate to explaining why the system generated a specific hint to the learner during the interaction and attacks, uh, looks, looks at different aspects of the process of the big graph that I showed you earlier. Two explain more like how specific components of uh, the underlying AI work. Um, and um, we're currently, as I speak, running a user study where we have learners come in our lab, use this uh, um, interactive simulation with the personalized hints and access to explanations. And what we want to monitor is if and how much learners access the explanations, how this uh, using of explanations actually affects how they learn from the system, how much they follow this, the hints, and how much they believe the hints are useful. And we also look at individual differences, meaning for every learner, we give them tests that um, measure uh, a specific personality trait that is need for cognition. Uh, we give them um, tests for measuring how their curiosity, because curiosity should be related to how much one needs and wants and can use explanations. And we also test them for abilities that relate to how easy it would be for them to process the textual and visual material that we have in the explanation. And the overall goal in the end will be to come up with an understanding of uh, which learn for which learners' explanations are useful. And I'm just gonna show you in the couple of minutes that I have left some initial results. So, so far these are results related to just 17 subjects. We're planning to run much more so that we can actually do some uh, serious statistical analysis on the results. But this shows that essentially um, the blue uh, represent how many hints each learner received when learning, when working with the interactive simulation. Um, Red is how many why explanation each of the 17 learners accessed in response of receiving the hints. And uh, orange yellow is how many how explanations. And all I want you to get from this uh, graph is the fact that there is a lot of variance. So it is true that not uh, every learner wants to access explanations. Some of them really do with this red line, for instance, the, the one in the middle. Some don't care so much. Um, and this is also, we also ask them at the end how much they trust that the hints are valuable and should be followed. And as you can see, this is how many, uh, it's, they give a response on a scale from one to five, agreed, disagreed. And as you can see, there is quite a lot of variance even for that in these 17 users that we ran so far. So how much explanations relate to trust seems to be very much user dependent. Uh, and the long-term goal after we're done running our subject will be to really create an un a better understanding on which learners need the explanation so that we can add to the AI in the system not just the ability of providing personalized hints, but also the ability to provide personalized explanations generated by the system to the learners that need them the most. And the overall long-term vision is really to be able to create um, personalized, trust-aware educational environments that can somehow, in addition to modeling the traditional goals uh, and properties of the user, 
are also able to somehow understand what's happening with user trust and also are capable of understanding how to use explanations to foster distrust when needed. Okay, thank you very much for your kind attention.